So hello, this is Ola Ringorsson and uh, I'm going to give you a, an update on what's happening with the uh, eruption in Geldingardalir, as the Icelandic name is. The eruption has now been ongoing for over three months from the 19th of March and it is still going strong. So the lava flow or the lava production seems to be remarkably constant. Uh, presently somewhere around 12 cubic meters per second. The lava flow increased uh, about a month and a half ago from being 5-6 cubic meters per second to be more than 10 cubic meters per second. And now it's uh, somewhere around 12 cubic meters per second. This means of course that the volume is continuously increasing. It is now somewhere in the order of about 80 million cubic meters, as we calculated, based on um, uh, photogrammetry and uh, uh, profiling across the lava in different places. The lava is also getting thicker, so um, where it's thick is now close to the crater, it's probably in the excess of 100 meters. It is flowing quite some distances, a few kilometers, and uh, it is now covering somewhere in the order of uh, almost four uh, square kilometers. The lava has increasingly flowed towards the south uh, and is slowly filling up some wallies. One of these wallies is called Nauthai, and it's like when you pour uh, water into a bathtub, uh, the Nautai Valley is slowly filling up. The lava has only a few meters to reach a threshold. Once it crosses that threshold, it will uh, flow down towards the shore. If that happens, or when that happens, it will go across the main road along the south coast. It will also go over some very important uh, fiber cables, which are buried in the ground there. And there's a great risk that uh, it will also overrun a farm. It is not a farm where, where, where people are actively farming now. It's a farm that's used more as a, for recreational purposes, as a summer house for the families who own the, the land. But still, this farm is uh, in the path of the lava. Now, uh, if the lava flow overruns the road and the farmstead of uh, Isolskauli, it will enter the sea. And that will certainly make for a spectacular sight as the hot lava rapidly cools and the sea boils. Now, lava flows have, during the past 10,000 years, from the last big glaciation, of Iceland during the so-called Holocene time. They have done this many, many times. And uh, the lava flows, they have made Iceland considerably bigger. They have maybe added as much as 10,000 square kilometers to the size of Iceland, which is uh, about one-tenth of the size of Iceland. So uh, lava entering the sea, that's going to be interesting to watch. What will happen as time passes is difficult to say. The eruption doesn't show any signs of letting up. Some of my colleagues at the Earth Science Institute, they are speculating that this eruption could go on for many months and even years. Now, geologists are pretty good at telling you what has happened. We are not as good as predicting with any certainty what will happen in the future. But we can say with certainty that if this eruption continues with the same production rate of lava as it is today, we will end up with a substantial lava flow and we might even have a new shield volcano. Only time will tell. But it's not only uh, the lava flow that's fairly constant and has been increasing. The eruption is also releasing lots of gases. 
the carbon dioxide release on daily basis is now somewhere in the order of 11 to 12,000 tons per day. We have other gases which are not very pleasant, including sulfur dioxide, and the sulfur dioxide production is somewhere close to 5,000 tons per day. This means that when we have calm weather and not much wind that can disperse the, the gases, there is considerable pollution by these gases around the um, volcano. And when we have light winds from the south, there is a cloud of, of volcanic gases that goes across and all the way over to, the, um, to Reykjavik, the capital area, and, and even further. So the uh, meteorological office uh, makes predictions and issues warnings when the gas pollution is getting dangerously high. Now, if the eruption continues for months or even years, this is likely to be a problem for us even in the foreseeable future. Having said this, this eruption is, of course, uh, a unique opportunity to study the formation of a shield volcano. There are a number of shield volcanoes on the Reykjanes Peninsula, but uh, they are all older than the settlement of Iceland. We haven't really been able to observe uh, what's happening and monitor it closely and be able to sample the, the lava from uh, time to time sample the gases, see how the chemical composition of the eruptives changes through time. And since this uh, magma is coming all the way from the mantle, from the upper layers of the mantle, from a depth of um, over 20 kilometers below the thin uh, crust that we have at Reykjanes, this gives us a unique opportunity to basically get samples from the mantle and as such, this eruption will give us information that we can use to highlight the situation, the chemical situation, the temperatures, the pressure and so on that are below the crust in Iceland. So this is a very, very interesting opportunity. The third thing I want to mention with this eruption is that it's not a very powerful eruption. It's not a very dangerous eruption. It is an eruption that people can actually visit, people can experience an eruption from not too far away, and as such, it's a, it's a unique opportunity for people to basically get to know or get acquainted with the very, very dynamic nature that we have in Iceland and with volcanism, and that's only positive.